Tell me another story. Hello. Today's story is about some gnomes. Very small people, rather like fairies. These gnomes went about helping people. This is the story of what happened to them. Once upon a time, there was a village. A lot of people lived in the village, including a baker, hello, a shoemaker, hello, and a tailor, hello. And in the village, there were also some gnomes. <laughs> the gnomes were very small, about as big as your hand. They hid underground and came out only at night. They liked to help people, but they didn't want people to see them. One night, the village baker was working very hard baking bread and cakes. There was a big wedding the next day. There's a big wedding tomorrow, and all the cakes had to be ready by the next morning. All these cakes have to be ready by the morning. The baker worked very hard to get everything ready, but by midnight there was still a lot to do. I must. Finish this by tomorrow morning. No, oh dear. What am I going to do? There's so much to do. I'll never get it all finished. The baker worked hard, and he kept on working. It got later and later, and the baker got more and more tired. Oh, I'm tired. And finally, he fell asleep. <coughs> Then there was a knock at the door. And the gnomes came in. What's the trouble here? He's got a lot to do. He's got all his work to finish. We'll help him. And the gnomes set to work. <laughs> and they worked until all the baking was finished. They see, oh, the work's finished now. And they went away. In the morning, the baker woke up. Oh, I've been asleep, and I've got all that work to do. Then he looked around him and saw that all the work had been done. What? All the work's been done. It's all finished. The baker guessed what had happened. I can guess what's happened. The gnomes must have been here. And he called out, "Wherever you are." Thank you. I'm very grateful. A few nights later, the village shoemaker was working very hard making shoes. There was a dance the next evening. There's a dance tomorrow evening, and everyone wanted new shoes. Everyone wants new shoes. All the shoes had to be ready by the next morning. All the shoes have to be ready by the morning. The shoemaker worked very hard to get everything finished, but by midnight there was still a lot to do. I must finish this by tomorrow morning. Oh dear, what am I going to do? There's so much to do. I'll never get it all finished. The shoemaker worked hard, and he kept on working. It got later and later. And the shoemaker got more and more tired. Oh, oh, I'm tired. And finally, he fell asleep. Then there was a knock at the door, and the gnomes came in. What's the trouble here? Oh, he's got a lot to do. He's got all this work to finish. We'll help him. And the gnomes set to work. <laughs> And they worked until all the shoes were finished. That's it. All the work's finished now. And they went away.
In the morning, the shoemaker woke up. Oh, oh, I've been asleep, and I've got all that work to do. Then he looked around him and saw that all the work had been done. What? All the work's been done. It's all finished. The shoemaker guessed what had happened. I can guess what's happened. The gnomes must have been here. And he called out, Wherever you are, thank you. I'm very grateful. And now some practice. This is what the baker said. I must finish this by tomorrow morning. Oh dear, what am I going to do? There's so much to do. I'll never get it all finished. I'm tired. The baker fell asleep, and the gnomes came to help him. They said, What's the trouble here? He's got a lot to do. He's got all this work to finish. We'll help him. And they finished the work. When the baker woke up, he said, I've been asleep. I've got all that work to do. Then he saw that all the work had been done, and he said, All the work has been done. It's all finished. And he called out to the gnomes, Thank you. I'm very grateful. And the same thing happened to the shoemaker. The gnomes helped him too. And now, back to the story. Now, there was a tailor in the village one night, the tailor was working very hard making a coat. The Lord Mayor had ordered a coat for a very important occasion. The Lord Mayor has ordered this coat for a very important occasion. The coat had to be ready by the next morning. The coat has to be ready by the morning. The tailor worked very hard to get the coat finished, but by midnight, there was still a lot to do. I must finish this by tomorrow morning. Oh, dear, what am I going to do? There's so much to do. I'll never get it all finished. The tailor worked hard, and he kept on working. It got later and later, and the tailor got more and more tired. Oh, I'm tired. And finally, he fell asleep. <laughs> then there was a knock at the door and the gnomes came in what's the trouble here oh he's got a lot to do he's got all this work to finish we'll help him and the gnomes set to work <laughs> And they worked until the coat was finished. That's it. All the work's finished now. And they went away. In the morning, the tailor woke up. Oh, I, I've been asleep and I've got all that work to do. Then he looked around him and saw that all the work had been done. What? All the work's been done. The coat's finished. The tailor guessed what had happened. I can guess what's happened. The gnomes must have been here. And he called out, Wherever you are, thank you. I'm very grateful. 
Then the tailor called his wife. My dear. What do you want? Come and look. What is it? The coat's finished. His wife was surprised. Finished? Yes. I fell asleep and the gnomes must have been here to help me. His wife was suspicious. Are you sure? Did you see them? No, no, I didn't see them. They don't want anyone to see them. They like to hide away in the daytime. They only come out at night. Oh. The wife had an idea, but she didn't tell her husband about it. She said to herself, If I could catch one of those gnomes, he could do all the housework for me and do all the sewing for my husband. Hmm. I want to catch one of those gnomes. Now, how can I do that? And then she thought of a plan. <gasps> I've thought of a plan. But she didn't tell her husband about it. The next evening, the tailor was working on another coat. His wife asked him what he was doing. What are you doing, dear? I'm making another coat, but I don't have to finish this one by tomorrow. I think I'll go to bed early tonight. So the tailor put away the unfinished coat and went to bed. Good night. Good night, dear. Then his wife took out the unfinished coat and put it on the table. I'll put this coat on the table where the gnomes can see it. Then she took some dried peas out of a jar and put them on the floor. I'll put these peas on the floor. The peas rolled over the floor. And then the wife hid in the cupboard. I'll hide in this cupboard and wait for the gnomes. Just after midnight, she heard a knock at the door. The door opened and the gnomes looked in. They saw the coat on the table. Look, there's a coat on the table. He hasn't finished it. Let's help him. And the gnomes came into the room and stepped on the peas. <coughs> and rolled all over the floor. <coughs> the wife jumped out of the cupboard and tried to catch one of them. Gotcha! But she slept on the peas, too. Oh. <laughs> and the gnomes managed to run out of the door. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, my God. And that was the last she saw of them. In fact, that was the last anyone saw of them. Because they never came back to the village again. The tailor's wife was sorry about what she had done. I shouldn't have tried to catch those gnomes. I shouldn't have done that. The tailor was sorry because he didn't get any more help. No, I won't get any more help. The baker and the shoemaker were sorry too. They called out, Wherever you are, come back. But the gnomes didn't come back. And they were never seen in the village again. And that's the end of the story. Tell me another story. Hello. Today's story is about a farmer. He was a very poor farmer, but he was very clever. Once upon a time, there was a farmer called John. John was poor, and his farm was very small. But he worked very hard on the farm and managed to make a living. Oh, it's a hard life. I have to work very hard, but I managed to make a living. Next to John's farm, there was a field. The field belonged to an old farmer. John wanted the field. I want that field. So he saved up his money and went to see the old farmer. I want to buy your field. Aye? I want to buy your field. Can I buy it? 
That field? Oh, that field. Well, what'll you give me? How much money have you got? I've saved up some money. Look. Oh, oh yes, I'll sell the field. So John bought the field from the old farmer. Now, the field is yours. Oh, thank you. I've wanted that field for a long time. John went home very pleased. He sat down and thought about the field he'd bought. Hmm, now that's a good field. I can make that field bear good crops. Now it's mine. It's not yours. It's mine. What? That field's not yours. It's mine. John looked up in surprise. Sitting in the chair opposite him was a little old man with a wrinkled face. He was about half the size of a grown man. John knew that the little man was a gnome. He'd often heard about gnomes, but he'd never seen one before. This must be a gnome, one of the fairy people. I've often heard about them, but I've never seen one before. Hmm. That field's not yours. It's mine. Yours? It's belonged to my family for years. What? No, it's not yours. It's mine now. I've bought it. I've paid for it. And I've got the papers to prove it. Papers? Pah! Papers. What have papers got to do with it? Papers don't prove anything. That field's belonged to my family for years. Long before you were here. Then the little man laughed. A wicked little laugh. <laughs> I'll make a bargain with you. You do all the work, and you have half the harvest, and I have the other half. I do all the work? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and I take half the harvest? That's right. That's not fair. It's my field. <laughs> John thought for a minute. Then he had an idea. I've got an idea. I'll get the better of him. So he said, All right, I'll do the work and take half the crop. Is that a bargain? That's a bargain. <laughs> and we'll share the harvest. Is that right? That's right. So that's half each. That's right. So, which half will you have? The top half or the bottom half? The top half or the bottom half? The top half, of course. The top half? Yes, the top half. I have the top half and you have the bottom half. That's fair. <laughs> the top half. Just as you like. It's all the same to me. Right then, it's a bargain. It's a bargain. You do the work, and I'll come back again at harvest time to collect my share of the crop. And the little man went away. So John worked hard. He dug the field and planted some turnips. There, I've planted some turnips. And after a while, the turnips came up. And they were a very good crop of turnips. Ah, that's a very good crop of turnips. And then the little man came to see John. Hello. Hello. I've come to collect my rent. I've come to collect my share of the crop. Good. Now, let's see. If I remember rightly, we agreed that you should have the top half and I should have the bottom half. That's right. I have the top half, and you had the bottom half. Well, I planted some turnips. Turnips? There's a heap of turnip tops all ready for you. What? Turnip tops? That's right. Don't I get any turnips? No. That's not fair. You have the top half, I have the bottom half. <laughs> That's what we agreed. So you get the turnip tops, and I get the turnips. The little man realized that John had got the better of him. He's got the better of me this time. But there was nothing he could do about it. 
<laughs> All right, then. What about next year? Well, what about next year? Which half do you want? What do you have? The top half or the bottom half? The bottom half. Next time, I'll have the bottom half. And you can have the top half. Right. Just as you like. It's all the same to me. I'll come back again at harvest time to collect my share of the... He won't get the better of me next time. And the little man went away. So John worked hard. He dug the field and planted some corn. I've planted some corn. And after a while, the corn came up. And it was a very good crop of corn. Ah, that's a very good crop of corn. And then the little man came to see John. Hello. Hello. I've come to collect my rent. I've come to collect my share of the crop. Good. Now, let's see. If I remember rightly, we agreed that you should have the bottom half and I should have the top half. That's right. I have the bottom half and you have the top half. Well, I planted some corn. Corn? Yes. There are some stalks and roots all ready for you. I harvested the corn last week. What? Stalks? Roots? Don't I get any corn? No. That's not fair. You have the bottom half, I have the top half. That's what we agreed. <clears throat> so I get the corn, and you get the stalks. The little man realised that John had got the better of him. <clears throat> he got the better of me this time. But there was nothing he could do about it. Yes. All right, then. What about next year? What about next year? Which half do you want? What do you have? The top half or the bottom half? Oh, no. You're not going to get the better of me next time. That field is mine. Next year, you'll sow that field with wheat... And we'll divide it in half while I'm there. Agreed. Uh, on one condition. What's that? On condition that you help with the reaping. Help with the reaping? Me? The little man didn't like this very much, but he didn't want John to get the better of him. So he agreed. All right. I'll help with the reaping. He won't get the better of me next time. And the little man went away. And now some practice. You repeat. The little man came to see John. He said, That field is mine. It's not yours. It's mine. The little man said to John, I'll make a bargain with you. You do all the work. You have half the harvest. I have the top half. You have the bottom half. And John said, I'll get the better of him. John tricked the little man. When the little man realized this, he said, That's not fair. He's got the better of me this time. The next time, the little man said that he wanted the bottom half of the crop, and John said, Just as you like. It's all the same to me. But John tricked the little man again. And now, 
back to the story. So John worked hard. He dug the field and planted some wheat. I've planted some wheat. And after a while, the wheat came up. And it was a very good crop of wheat. Ah, that's a very good crop of wheat. And then the little man came to see John. Hello. Hello. I've come to collect my rent. I've come to collect my share of the crop. This time, the little man had a plan. I've got an idea. Oh, yes. We'll have a competition. We'll each reap half the field. We'll have a race. And whoever finishes first has the old crop. <laughs> I'll get the better of him. Hmm. I've got an idea. I'll get the better of him. Agreed. Which side of the field do you want to reap? Which side? I'll take the far side. The far side. All right. Just as you like. It's all the same to me. Now, when shall we meet to do this reaping? And they arranged a time to meet, and the little man went away. Then John went off to the blacksmith and bought a whole lot of iron poles. Here are the iron poles. I'll plant them among the wheat, but only on the far side of the field. <laughs> I'll get the better of him. <laughs> When the day came, the little man arrived with a big scythe for cutting the wheat. Hello, here I am. And John came along with a big scythe too. Hello. The little man went to the far side of the field and John went to the near side. They got ready to start. Are you ready? Yes. Whoever finishes first has the whole crop, right? Yes. Then start when I say go. Go. And they started to mow. Before long, the little man's scythe hit one of the iron poles. Oh, cool. What's that? That's a tough weed. And then another. And another. There are a lot of tough weeds in this field. And every time his scythe hit an iron pole, the blade got blunter and blunter. My blade's getting blunter and blunter. And the little man looked across the field to John, who was reaping his half of the field very fast. He's got the better of me again. That's three times. I've had enough of this. I'm going first, Terry. So the little man took his scythe and left. I've got the better of him this time. <laughs> and... Tell me another story. Hello. Today's story is about a king, a princess, three brothers, and some pearls. P-E-A-R-L-S, pearls. Once upon a time, there was a small country ruled over by a king. I am the king. The king and his wife had a very pretty daughter. I'm the princess. The king wanted his daughter to marry a good husband, because the princess's husband would be the next king. I want my daughter to marry a good husband. He'll be the next king after me. The king wanted his daughter to marry a man who was rich and clever. He must be rich, and he must be clever. 
The king thought about this for a while. Mm. Then he had an idea. I've had an idea. So the king made an announcement. I have an announcement to make. The man who can bring me twelve beautiful pearls and who can perform the tasks I set him can marry my daughter. But the pearls must be very beautiful. And the tasks will be very difficult. The king was pleased with his plan. This is a good plan. The pearls can only be brought by a wealthy man. And if he performs the tasks I give him, he'll be very clever as well. And if he's rich and clever, he can marry my daughter and become the next king. Mm. After this, lots of people came to the palace. Many of them came with beautiful pearls, but no one could perform the tasks the king set him. Now far away by the sea, there lived a fisherman and his three sons, Peter, Percy and Paul. One day, the fisherman went out fishing and brought home among the fish three dozen oysters. Look what I've got, boys. Three dozen oysters. And when the fisherman and his sons opened the oysters, they found inside each oyster a large and beautiful pearl. Look at that. Every oyster has a pearl inside it. Thirty-six beautiful pearls. That's twelve each. Then all the brothers had the same idea at once. I've, I've got, got an idea. idea. I, I want, want to take, take these pearls, pearls to the king, king and marry the princess. And after some discussion, they decided that Peter, who was the eldest, should go to the palace. I'm the eldest. I'm going to the palace to marry the princess. So Peter put the pearls in a basket and set off for the palace. Peter had not gone very far before he met the king of the ants. Hello, I'm the king of the ants. The king of the ants was at the head of his army. He was getting ready to fight the king of the beetles and his army. I'm getting ready to fight the king of the beetles and his army. But the beetles are too big for us. Come and help me. No, I'm too busy. Oh, come and help me. I may help you someday in return. But Peter wouldn't help. I'm not going to waste my time on you. And he walked away. A little further on, Peter met an old woman. Good morning. Mm. You're up early. Mm. What have you got in that basket? Ashes. Mind your own business. And Peter walked away. But the old woman called after him. Very well. Ashes it is. Soon, Peter arrived at the palace. He took the basket of pearls to the king. The king thought that they were the most beautiful pearls he had ever seen. They're the most beautiful pearls I've ever seen. But then, a strange thing happened. Hey, what's happening? The pearls are turning black. And the pearls were turning black. And then they turned to ashes. The pearls, they've turned to ashes. But how... I don't understand it. The king was very angry. Is this some sort of trick? No, no, your majesty. Out, out, get out of here. And Peter left the palace as fast as he could and went home again. When 
Peter got back home, his father and brothers wanted to know how he had got on. Well, how did you get on? He didn't like the pearls. His father was surprised. He didn't like the pearls? Those beautiful pearls? I don't understand it. But Peter wouldn't say anything more about what had happened. Then the second son, Percy, decided that it was his turn. It's my turn now. So Percy put his twelve pearls in a basket and set off for the palace. But unfortunately, Percy, who was just as rude as his brother, met the same people and said the same things. And his pearls turned to ashes too. And now some practice. This is what the king said. You repeat. I want my daughter to marry a good husband. He must be rich. He must be clever. The king made an announcement. He said, The man who can bring me twelve beautiful pearls and who can perform the tasks I set him can marry my daughter. A fisherman and his three sons found 36 pearls inside 36 oysters. The three sons took 12 pearls each. The eldest son, Peter, set off for the palace with his 12 pearls. On the way, he met the king of the ants. The king of the ants said, Come and help me. I may help you someday in return. But Peter said, I'm not going to waste my time on you. A little further on, Peter met an old woman. She said, You're up early. What have you got in that basket? And Peter said, Ashes. Then he said to himself, Mind your own business. But when Peter arrived at the palace and showed the pearls to the king, they turned to ashes. Peter said, The pearls. They've turned to ashes. I don't understand it. So Peter had to leave the palace and go home without the princess. Then Peter's brother Percy set out with his twelve pearls, but the same thing happened to him. And now, back to the story. Paul decided that it was his turn to try. It's my turn now. His brothers laughed at him. <laughs> <laughs> you? You'll come back pretty quickly. If we can't marry the princess, you certainly can't. But Paul decided to go anyway. I'm going anyway. So Paul put his pearls into a basket and set off for the palace. <laughs> had not gone very far before he met the king of the ants. Hello, I'm the king of the ants. The king of the ants was at the head of his army. He was getting ready to fight the king of the beetles and his army for the third time. I'm getting ready to fight the king of the beetles and his army again. They beat us last time. 
They're too big for us. Come and help us, or we'll be completely defeated. I may help you someday in return. Paul had always heard that the ants were good, hard-working creatures. I've always heard that ants are good, hard-working creatures. But he'd never heard anyone say anything good about the beetles. But I've never heard anyone say anything good about the beetles. So he agreed to help the ants. Yes, I'll help you. So Paul stamped on the ground with his boots. The beetles ran away, and the ants were the winners. The king of the ants was very grateful. Thank you. I'm very grateful. Just call me when you want me, wherever you are. I'm never far away. If I can possibly help you, I will. Paul thanked the king of the ants. Thank you very much. I'll remember that. But he didn't see how the king of the ants could possibly help him. I don't see how an ant can help me, but it was nice of him to offer. So Paul said goodbye to the king of the ants. Goodbye. Goodbye. And walked on. <laughs> A little further on, Paul met the same old woman that Peter and Percy had met. Good morning. Good morning. You're up early. Yes. What have you got in that basket? Pearls. I'm going to the palace with them. I want to marry the princess. And he showed the pearls to the old woman. Look. Oh, they're beautiful. Very beautiful. But you need more than beautiful pearls if you want to marry the princess. You'll have to perform the tasks you're set. Yes, I know. Paul had brought some food with him for his journey. The old woman noticed this. I see that you've brought some food with you. She asked Paul for some of his food. Will you give me some of your food? After all, when you get to the palace, they'll give you a good dinner. Oh. I hadn't thought of that. You can have all of my food. So Paul gave all his food to the old woman. She was very pleased. Oh, thank you. And she gave him something in return. I want to give you something in return. Here, take this whistle. The old woman gave Paul a whistle. This whistle isn't much to look at, but you'll find it very useful. If you blow this whistle, anything that you've lost or that has been taken away from you will come back to you at once. Paul thanked the old woman. Thank you very much. I don't see how this whistle can help me, but it was nice of her to give it to me. So Paul said goodbye to the old woman. Goodbye. Goodbye. And good luck. And Paul walked on towards the palace. And if you want to find out what happened, you'll have to listen next time. Goodbye. Hello. Today we continue the story of the king who wanted his daughter, the princess, to marry a good husband. And the story of Paul, who wanted to marry the princess. The king wanted his daughter to marry a good husband. I want my daughter to marry a good husband. He must be rich and he must be clever. So the king made an announcement. The man who can bring me 12 beautiful pearls and who can perform the tasks I set him can marry my daughter. The three sons of a fisherman decided to try to win the princess. The first two were unsuccessful, but the youngest one, Paul, did better. He brought 12 beautiful pearls to the king. The king liked the pearls, but he was worried because Paul was a fisherman's son. I don't want my daughter to marry a fisherman's son. I must get rid of him somehow. So the king set Paul some very difficult tasks. Paul performed the first task successfully. For the second task, Paul was taken into a field. The king said to him, A hundred rabbits. 
have been let loose. By the end of the day, you must bring them all back into this field. Difficult, isn't it? And it was difficult. But luckily, Paul had a special whistle. Paul blew the whistle, and all the rabbits came back into the field. When the king saw this, he was very worried. I don't want my daughter to marry a fisherman's son. I must get rid of him somehow. Now, let me think. All he has to do is lose one of the rabbits, and he can't marry my daughter. All he has to do is lose one of the rabbits. And the king thought of a plan. Ah! I've thought of a plan. And this is where this part of the story really starts. Paul stood in the field surrounded by rabbits. Then someone came into the field. It was a girl in a ragged dress. She walked up to Paul. Hello. Hello. Please give me one of your rabbits. Uh, well, I'm afraid I can't give you a rabbit. Oh, why not? I must have them all here in the evening. It's very important. Oh, please give me a rabbit. Oh, very well. I'll give you a rabbit on one condition. What's that? That you give me a kiss. Oh, oh, all right. The pretty girl gave Paul a kiss. And Paul gave her a rabbit. Here's a rabbit for you. Oh, thank you. And the pretty girl went away with the rabbit. But as soon as the pretty girl was outside the field, Paul blew the whistle. And the rabbit came back again. Not long after this, Paul had another visitor. This time it was a fat old woman in ragged clothes. She too asked Paul for a rabbit. Please give me one of your rabbits. Well, I'm afraid I can't give you a rabbit. Oh, why not? I must have them all here in the evening. It's very important. Oh, oh please give me a rabbit. Oh, very well. I'll give you a rabbit. On one condition. What's that? I want you to walk round me on tiptoe, look up at the sky, and cackle like a hen. What? But that's ridiculous. What would the neighbours say if they saw me? They'd think I'd gone mad. Oh, well, just as you like. But if you want the rabbit, you'll have to do what I ask you. Oh, all right. So the old woman walked around Paul on tiptoe, looking up at the sky and cackling like a hen. <laughs> That's not very good. Well, it's the best I can do. All right, it'll do. And Paul gave the old woman a rabbit. Here's a rabbit for you. Thank you. And the old woman went away with the rabbit. But as soon as the old woman was outside the field, Paul blew his whistle and the rabbit came back again. Not long after this, Paul had a third visitor. This time it was a fat old man dressed in the uniform of a royal servant. He too asked Paul for a rabbit. Young man, I want one of those rabbits. Um, well... Name your price. Well, I'm afraid I can't sell you a rabbit. Oh, why not? I must have them all here in the evening. It's very important. Oh, I must have a rabbit. Well, I'll give you a rabbit on one condition. What's that? I want you to stand on your head, hit your heels together and shout hooray. What? Well, that's ridiculous. What would the neighbours say if they saw me? They'd think I'd gone mad. Oh, well, just as you like. But if you want the rabbit, you'll have to do what I ask you. 
Uh, all right. So the old man stood on his head. <coughs> Get his heels together. And shouted hooray. Hooray! Hmm. That's not very good. <coughs> well, it's the best I can do. Oh, well, it'll do. And Paul gave the old man a rabbit. Here's a rabbit for you. Oh, thank you. And the fat old man went away with the rabbit. But as soon as the old man was outside the field, Paul blew his whistle, and the rabbit came back again. So in the evening, Paul and all the rabbits were in the field, and Paul had completed two tasks successfully. By now, the king was really worried. I don't want my daughter to marry a fisherman's son. I must get rid of him somehow. And now, some practice. This is what the king said. You repeat. I don't want my daughter to marry a fisherman's son. I must get rid of him somehow. Paul was standing in a field full of rabbits. A pretty girl came into the field and asked him for a rabbit. Paul said, I'm afraid I can't give you a rabbit. But the girl asked again and again. And finally, Paul said, Oh, very well. I'll give you a rabbit. On one condition. And he asked the girl to give him a kiss. She gave him a kiss, and Paul gave her a rabbit. But as soon as the pretty girl was outside the field, Paul blew his special whistle, and the rabbit came back to him. Then Paul had another visitor, an old woman. She asked him for a rabbit, and he said he'd give it to her on one condition. He wanted her to walk round him, look up at the sky, and cackle like a hen. The old woman said, What would the neighbours say if they saw me? They would think I'd gone mad. And Paul said, Just as you like. But if you want the rabbit, you'll have to do what I ask you. So the old woman agreed. Paul gave the old woman a rabbit. But the rabbit soon came back again when he blew his whistle. Then Paul had a third visitor, an old man. The old man wanted a rabbit. And after he had done what Paul asked him, Paul gave him a rabbit. But the rabbit soon came back again. So Paul had completed two tasks successfully, and the king was very worried. And now, back to the story. Next day, Paul was taken to the great hall of the palace. Everyone was there. The king, the queen, and the princess sat on their thrones, and the lords and ladies stood around the hall. <laughs> then two servants carried a large empty tub into the hall and put it down beside the king's throne. Now, you see this tub? Yes. You must make as many true statements as you can until the tub is full. If you can't fill the tub with true statements, you can't marry the princess. But how do I know when the tub is full? Leave that to me. I'll know when it's full. Difficult, isn't it? The king told Paul to begin. Begin now. So Paul began. Yesterday, 
when I was looking after the rabbits, a girl came to me in a ragged dress. She asked me for a rabbit. I gave her the rabbit, but before she got it, she had to give me a kiss. And that girl was the princess. Oh, oh, that's a beautiful story. Isn't that true? Uh, yes. <laughs> Yes, it is true. Oh, <laughs> but the king wasn't satisfied. Uh, that may be a true statement, but it hasn't filled much of the tub. Go on. So Paul went on. After that, a fat old woman in ragged clothes came to me. She asked me for a rabbit. I gave her a rabbit. But before she got it, she had to walk around me on tiptoe, looking up at the sky and cackling like a hen. <laughs> and that old woman was the queen. <gasps> Isn't that true? Um, yes, it is true. Extraordinary. Really? The king still wasn't satisfied. Um, yes, that's another true statement, but the tub isn't full yet. Um, <clears throat> go on. So Paul went on. After that, a fat old man came to me. He asked me for a rabbit. I gave him a rabbit. But before he got it, he had to stand on his head, hit his heels together, and shout, Hooray! And that old man... Hey, was... Stop! Stop! <laughs> you needn't say another word. The tub is full now. And everyone clapped. Bravo, bravo. Yeah. And the princess smiled. By this time, she'd fallen in love with Paul. He's so handsome, and he's so clever. And the king had to agree to the marriage. <clears throat> yes, you can marry my daughter. And he said to the queen, Perhaps it's a good thing after all. He's very clever. Yes, he's very clever. She's very good-looking. And so, Paul and the princess were married. <laughs>